So this is um, Chris Cornell, which is Sub Pop Sunday at the Vogue, which turned out to be uh, for their first EP, the cover, Screaming Life. His voice was, was uh, impressive from, from the get-go. You know, it was such a, we just hadn't heard, heard that before, you know? Singing like that and just a beautiful person and shy and, and you know, not, not a rock star material at all. He was, he was very reserved and very private. Uh, even back 25 years ago, he was a man of very few words, you know? Uh, always a delightful fellow, always total sweetheart. But I think Chris's situation was a personal thing and it was unique to him. And I don't think you can draw any wider lesson from it, really. It's, you know, 25 years later. Chris is the greatest rock singer of our generation. The music that was made of bands of, of all genres, so creative, so people dug so deep whether the world heard them or not, they were digging so deep to create something so special, and it was appreciated. Reggie Watt, Sean Smith, Mark Lanigan, Kurt Cobain, Chris Cornell, I mean, I'm just used to everybody singing great. It's like, oh, here's another, well, set up the mic, oh shit, okay, it's just taking care of itself. Here's somebody else that sounds as good as anybody I grew up with on the radio, you know, and so for me, it was all these you know, amazing vocal talents fronting all these, you know, somewhat interesting oddball bands. And the thing about grunge is, is that the music, it, it spanned like this spectrum of rock and roll, everything from the stadium to the thrown ups. There was something for everybody. And it synergized. Mm -hmm. It really had an impact on all of us, certainly, but an, an impact on music history. It was a certain period in time in music that I think was the last period in time like that. Things kind of got decentralized and globalized. Nothing could like um, formulate for years underground. It was the last pre-internet music scene. 